Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. Now I've decided that I'm going to make a video on explaining how my bump steer uh, corrections work. Now it seems to go down well, a lot of you seem to be interested in that video. It was quite a technical one. Um, one thing you will remember if you watch, if you didn't watch it, go and watch the last video. I'll put a link up now. But the one thing you would have noticed is obviously I was overjoyed it worked and I was told before and it wouldn't work. So the reason I thought I'd make this video is to try and explain why I was told it wouldn't work and how we did end up working. First of all, I am not a race engineer. I'm not an expert. I'm just like you. I'm an hobbyist. Something I'm passionate about though is suspension geometry and angling. It's something I do like researching. So I will get things wrong, but I'll try my best to be as accurate as I can. So I'm going to show you some drawings and then I'm going to explain to you the reasoning behind it on why I was told that Steve what you're going to do is not going to work um, and then we look at how I turned that around and it did work so come and have a look at these drawings all right so this is the first one I'm going to show you now I got this drawing from pinderwagon.com so this is the typical suspension strut. It's upside down for me. So I'm going to try and work upside down. And uh, what you notice is your low control arm is uh, dotted out the range of motion and the arc is going to follow. There's your steering tie rod and that's the range of motion the arc that's going to follow. Now that is seriously exaggerated. So you're not, you're not, you're not really going to see a steering tie rod at that angle unless something's gone wrong with your suspension or you've lowered it drastically in that case your lower arm would follow a similar path but anyway that's besides the point this is just for illustration purposes so it says but a difference between these two is the amount of bump steer so your tie rod follows an arc low control arm follows that arc obviously they are different so i'll do some more drawings to help understand later in a minute but as that comes up and it's drawing a different arc obviously it's going to then turn your steering mechanism your hub and cause bump steer now it's impossible to get this perfect and to get these two angles the same but if you could i'll show you what it would look like so on this drawing it's a little bit blurry because i printed it off the computer but still we can see so on this drawing the tie rod has been brought down to the same pivot point as a lower control arm now i don't know of any car that exists that has this it's practically impossible from what i've researched to get this to happen um, because it's just fitting everything in with a subframe you try to lower uh, wishbone and the tie rod just impossible but if you could you can see how you get a perfectly same arc they'll both track up an equal distance apart and then you would get no bump steer your wheel would stay straight ahead when you're driving but like i say this is practically impossible so every car is going to have an amount of bump steer now in the last video i kind of explained what what effect bump steer would have when you're cornering i didn't really say about what effect bump steer will have as you go over a bump so if you're driving down the road normally and you're not on track you hit the bump and one wheel goes up then that one wheel is going to change direction with the bump see that's where the car will start wandering that's where you get that steering so that's another uh, problem with bump steer so what we're going to look at now is i'm going to explain to you why i was told my theory won't work so i'm going to i'm going to draw on this diagram in a minute and then uh, you'll be able to see the theory behind why it shouldn't work so if we go back to this drawing here, so this um, is the the steering rack would come off here for argument's sake, okay? Now, what I've done is I've raised the steering rack. So let's say we've put it, put it here. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to try my best to simulate the arc. So if we imagine a tie rod, then goes across to there it'll probably be slightly longer but we'll just do that for argument's sake okay now if i can find a way of making our pivot 
and rotate that. Let's see what I can do. I'm not going to say this is going to work perfectly, but I'll try. If we come up with an arc off that. Right. So, like I say, it's not perfect, but you can see how I've completely made that arc different to how that started. So, bringing the steering rack up has made the arc difference worse. So, he, he would be right in the sense of, yes, that will make your problem worse. But it didn't. It made it better. And I'm going to draw out and explain to you the theory of how it didn't make it worse. Right, so on this bit of paper, now, I'm going to draw some track rod arms, okay? So we'll go from 12 to 9 there. We'll put an angle up there. Out tonight, and I'll do another one just here, for example. Right. So, if I, if these are three different positions, okay. So just focus on one. But the arc this is going to follow. Let me just. I'm just going to do that. So if we look at the centre one, and that pivots, your tie rod. Is going to go in that motion so let's fragment say that you're i gotta think now i'm doing it upside down so your wishbone um is down down here it's coming from there and then your ball joint pin is up there hub somewhere around there like i say it's not a perfect drawing but you get the idea so what i had was more or less because I changed the ball joint position and the car was lower, my uh, tie rod was more on an up angle. It wasn't as extreme as that. So what I'm going to now do is draw another line here. A vertical line. Now, as that tie rod follows that arc, if you remember from my first measurements, as the um, this tie rod came up, it's getting further away from the centre line. So that will have the effect of pulling the steering arm in, which will give me toe out. So as I came up, I had increased bump steer. As I went down, it neutraled out and went to toe, toe in. So it went back the opposite way. So as you're coming down, it's going that way. And if you were in that position, you would have vice versa. So your tie rod has got to follow that arc. You can look at the relationship between the two, and that can get very confusing. But in theory, if you get your tie rod in this position here, parallel to the ground, then you get very little range of motion in your steering uh, geometry, really. I mean, the pictures we looked at were quite exaggerated. So let's, for argument's sake, let's just say realistically, you went down 50 mil, and your suspension went up 50 mil. <clears throat> now my arcs are not perfect, <clears throat> but you know the the wishbone when it's parallel is only travelling from here to you. So the difference between what it's going to be pulling is a lot more minimal when it's in a parallel position. That is. Uh, range of motion than what it would do if it started from this point. So when I paralleled out my steering arm by raising the steering rack, that's how when I took the new measurements, when the suspension went uh, compressed up, uh, it pulled this way, because it's at the back of the wheel, I had just under one mil of toe out. And as I went down past ride height, now bear in mind this is ride height, so as I went down, it then came back in as well, same the other way, and I had toe out um, to just under a mil. <clears throat> so, yes, what it, we looked at with this drawing is correct. You do want to try and get them angles as close as possible, but it's not always doable. So if you get your tie rod parallel to the ground, and your range of motion is very close to this centre point here, then there isn't a lot of deflection or difference in your toe. 
So that's the perfect scenario. Now, the other way that can be done is if you don't raise the steering rack and for argument's sake, um, you, you tie rod was in this position, like some people will pull an extended track rod head in and a track rod end in and they will pull the arm down. So you're doing a similar thing. By doing it that way, if you did extend, uh, do a, an extended tie rod and pull this arm down, now you would be getting a closer arc to that one, whereas like mine has took the arc further away, but the results would be very similar. So, hopefully that wasn't too complicated to understand. Um, I've tried my best to make it as simple as I could, but that's the theory. That's how it worked and it is because you're searching for that parallel arm. So if you don't have a bump steer gauge and you want to make any adjustments, if you go for a parallel arm, all right, it's not perfect. You should be checking your bump steer. But if you look at your tie rod, and your tie rod is going from the steering rack and it's going up to your hub, you know that when that goes up further, it's only pulling further away. In its arc of motion so the more parallel you get it that's what you're aiming for so if that's the least of what you can do then aim for a for a parallel tie rod right hopefully i haven't thrown too much confusion into your brain and hopefully you have been able to understand but it's a subject that i i enjoy so i just thought i'd share that a bit bit of info with you so anyway next video i'm going to be sorting out the right height on the car uh, I'm going to run you through that and I'm also going to, going to give you measurements that you can translate to your Fiesta if you want to copy exactly what I've done. So you can use the same size spacer with the hard race um, extended ball joint. So I'll give you all of that information you need in that video and then you can just go and copy everything I've done. Right, thank you very much for watching this video. See you on the next one. Bye.